Good morning or afternoon, everybody. I am getting ready to do day 32, chapter 32 of the book of Job. Day 32, chapter 32. We have been in Job for 32 days. And we're getting ready to see what God is saying, the truth. In um, Job chapter 32. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you've allowed us to get 32 days of nothing but straight word, clearly written and understood, so that we can eradicate any religious beliefs, because you just said what was going on in the man's life, and you allowed us to see it, and all we have to do is pay attention to what you said, and we can walk out with an understanding. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your light. Thank you for you are the light of the world. And the word of God is the light, is the path, and I can see which way to turn and how to think. Thank you for being my teacher and my God. Thank you for... My little thanks is not enough to, to, to know, and all day long it would take me all day. I just want to thank you for being God and being my God. Father, I ask that you bless everybody that would take the time to take another look at your word. That is my prayer. And I know that if you can turn my head around to pay attention to, to what you said, I think that I know you can do the same for anybody else who desires that turn. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins, and thank you for showing me how to forgive others as I learn your word. Thank you for being forever almighty. You are the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I'm about to get into Job chapter 32. All right, so Job has finished speaking. Job took about the last five books and he finished what he had to say. And now we got a new guy. So we'll just talk about it as we go to chapter 32, uh, starting with verse one. So these, and I'm reading from the New King James today. So these three men ceased answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. So Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, Zophar, say I'm done with Job. I don't got nothing else to say to him because he's one of them guys that if he think he's right, then he thinks that he's right and you can't tell him nothing. So they walking around, I'm done with him. Then the wrath of Elihu. A new guy is speaking up. Then the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakalchel, the Buzite of the family of Ram. So we got this new guy in the picture today. He's like, where did this guy come from? Well, he was there all the time, but he was silent. He was aroused against Job. He was upset. His wrath was aroused because he justified himself rather than God. He said, the reason why I don't deal with Job is because he, he, he sound more like he's righteous and, and he hadn't done anything wrong and there's no human being that hadn't done anything wrong and I, you know, but let's finish a little bit more about him before I get into his character. Also against his three friends, his wrath was aroused because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. They said, now he, you condemned Job, but on what merit? So Elihu was saying, I don't like Job because he, he act like he too holy. Oh, he's more holier than, than anybody I know. And I don't agree with you three guys because y'all condemn the guy and don't have any evidence. He said, but just let me talk. He said, now because they were years older than he, Elihu had waited to speak to Job. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his wrath was aroused. He said, now you got three guys as much older than I am. Even Job is older than I am. And they couldn't bring Job down. And so I was thinking about that this morning. I said, what is it? Well, let me, let me finish the sixth verse. So Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young in years and you are very old. He said, now, <clears throat> therefore, I was afraid. And I dare not declare my opinion to you. So this is what Elihu is saying. I have heard uh, all three of you old guys 
speak. It's almost like you go to a church with the older people with the gray hair and the gray beard. And then you got this young guy who might be, he may be 18, 19. I, it didn't give an age. He said he was, y'all are much older than I am. He said, I sat here and I thought I would give respect to the older people because I thought, you know, y'all know what y'all talking about. But being that if you're going to, they, he said, if you're going to accuse a man of being wrong, then where is the evidence that Job did something wrong? And he said, I can't, I can't handle it. His whole, let me just read it and then I'll talk about it because if I stop, because it's not very much. He said, I am young in years and you are very old. Therefore, I was afraid and dare not declare my opinion to you. I said, age should speak. In multitude of years should teach wisdom. In other words, I need to sit down and let them talk. He said, but there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. He said, great men or old men, or old men are not always wise. Nor do the age always understand justice. He said, I sat here as a young man. I shut my mouth up and I gave the old guys a chance to speak. Y'all been talking a long time. He says, so now, since I understand that wisdom is not necessarily in gray hair, I'm going to speak as a young man. Because I waited for y'all to say something. You said absolutely nothing. He said, therefore, I say, listen to me. I also will declare my opinion. Indeed, I waited for your words. I listened to your reasonings while you searched out what to say. I saw y'all fumbling. I paid close attention to you, and surely not one of you convinced Job. This is the young man talking to the three older guys plus Job. You, you, you did not, you surely not one of you convinced Job or answered his words, lest you say we have found wisdom. In other words, had you been able to, to, to bring correction to Job, you would have said, okay, I, I, I got the wisdom of God. God will vanquish him, not man. In other words, God will bring Job down and punish him for all the sins he got. And it, it won't be because of something that you said because you didn't say anything. And therefore, he is not condemned by your words. But wait till I get through what Job said, the young man. Now he has not directed his words against me. Now he has not directed his words against me. So Job never said anything to me because every time he says them, he was looking at y'all. They are dismayed and answer no more. So the three guys said, hmm, hmm. The old guy said, just let the young man speak. And I have waited because they did not speak, because they stood still and answered no more. I also will answer my part, said the young man, Elihu. The, spirits, the spirit within me, compels me. Indeed, my belly is like wine that is not vent. In other words, I'm about to bust open like a bottle of wine that's never been open. It is ready to burst like a new wine skin. I will speak that I may find relief. I must open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray, show partiality to anyone. He said, I don't need, I'm not going to take I'm not going to look at you, and, 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 and I need to go back to King James and show y'all what this is, isn't it? Because it's, it sounds a little bit different. Hold on, KJV, Job 32. I'm going to put it in and show you how they said it, because it's a little stronger for me. And I'm going down to the last three verses. He said, I will speak that I may be refreshed, and I will open my lips and answer. I'm getting ready to tell you, give you a piece of my mind. He said, let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. He said, I'm not going to give honor to you because you got a title. I'm not going to give honor to you because you got one. He said, because, mm -mm. for I know not to give flattering titles. I don't title people. And so doing my maker will soon take me away. In other words, God has no, he said, as soon as you stick a title in front of your name, God said, I'm done. That's what this little boy said. 
Now, he's, some things that he's saying is right, but he told Job, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And that's all he said. That's just verse 32. I mean, chapter 32. He hadn't said a word. He's going to talk for the next five chapters. And he's going to give Job a new revelation. He said, I ain't going to use none of them old folk what they said because none of what they said. Job explained to them, I have not done anything wrong, but yet you accuse me. So here we got this new guy. So I want to show you what I learned about the, the young guy and what I know about him and the older guys. Elihu, I mean, uh, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, they were, the, they were the preachers in the church, if I could say it like that. I'm just telling you what they said. You had to go back and read it for yourself if you were not with me. They based their uh, understanding of Job by traditions. In other words, if I went to, in my church, they always say Bishop so-and-so said this. Bishop so-and-so said this. All the way back to the beginning bishop, Bishop who we call Mason. So all of what they were saying was just like these guys. They referred to somebody else. And they said, Job, you wrong. You did something wrong. Ain't no way in the world God would put you in a position like that except you done sin somewhere. You just won't admit it. And this went on for months. But what they did not do, Eliphaz, Zophar, Bildad, they didn't go to the word. The first and second chapter of Job said, and God spoke to Satan. They never knew that. Job never knew it. Eliphaz never did. Why they didn't know it? Because they didn't ask God. They didn't go to the word to say, well, let's see why it could be like that. So they basically said, my years of experience, and this is very dangerous. My years of experience has taught me thus and so. Your years of experience is not older than God's. That's why he said, watch my word. Because you repeat what somebody said because it's been repeated. But if I didn't say it, you're gonna have to, I'm going to have to deal with you on that. So... Everything that, so here come the new guy. Okay. What's, what is that like in our day? You got the traditional church who does not read the word. They pick things out of it. It ain't got nothing to do with God's word. But they, you got the traditional church that says we ought to, we this. And they got the deep voice because they told Job, I'm older than your daddy. So you, 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 you are. Uh, you say what's been taught all your life. My mama said this. My uncle said this. And you hear it and then you repeat it and you think that it's good. That's what those three guys did that was talking to Job. But here comes this new guy. So I take my life. I left 33 years of a tr of traditional church. Then I moved to Atlanta. Then I went to a church that was new, like this new guy. And they're saying things, him saying, it, 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 he, like he said, I tried, I respect you and I let you talk because you're older than me. And I thought maybe I would say, let the older people talk because I'm being respectful. He said, but mm -mm, y'all ain't talking about nothing because you couldn't find a fault with the guy. So I'm going to let him know what's wrong with him. So when I came to Atlanta and I went to a, a big church, and I went where they teach, um, uh, what, did, what they teach. And I stayed there 17 years. And I was, I was really there because it was exciting. It was new. And they talked about the grace doctrine. So that's totally different from anything I ever been brought up in. And it, it, it sounded new and it sounded refreshing. Just like this guy said in 20th verse, I will speak that I may be refreshed. Because all of the things that I was taught, well, a lot of the things that I was taught, that's why I just read for myself. I said, forget everybody. I'm shutting everybody up. Because some things were taught and it was right and some things were not. So I said, let me just go read this word for myself. So when I got to the big church here in Atlanta, they said, the, the, the church said that 
unless they change. The last time I was there, it was said, uh, you don't need the Old Testament because that's under the law. And so we got this message that we're under grace. And grace meant that, I really don't know what they call grace. All, all I know is that you can sin and still be in, pretty much, from what I understood. Because I saw a lot of stuff that people were doing that never been to church, and the church was now doing it. And said, you can't condemn me because I'm under grace. I ain't got nothing to condemn you with. Not me. I'm not smart enough to tell nobody nothing. I'm trying to mind my own business. I'm just one of these fingers. I just fit on the hand. But if I read the word, it is not me that's saying it. I'm just reading. But when you tell me that I don't need the Old Testament based on the fact that Jesus came, and Jesus clearly said, don't do that. But anyway, so now we got this new guy. He's going to speak. So now we got this divide. And the new guy, the next chapter, which I will read later on tonight, and I'll talk about it tomorrow if the Lord let me live. And I'll tell you what he said on in chapter 33. But right now, I see exactly what we're doing in, in 2021. You got the traditional church, and you got the new doctrine, and they neither one of them right. Everybody got to go back to this word and reread it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what church you got. I don't care if you just started church today. When Moses, I'm going to tell you why. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt by God, when God did it using Moses, Moses told those 12 tribes, he said, I heard y'all talking all up and down that road. Been listening to y'all talking for 40 years. He said, all 12 of y'all got a different doctrine about God. And Moses knew that he was not going to the promised land. He said, let me tell y'all something. When you get across to that promised land, he said, I'm going to tell y'all what y'all do. He said, it's going to be one name. And God said, I'm going to put my name on that. And that's the only thing you better speak. He said, you go in there, I do this, and I don't believe this, and I don't do this, and we do it like this, and I do all of this talk. Moses said, God said, when you get to that promised land, there better be one book that you read and you better pay attention to. I ain't said pick out of it. I didn't say pick out of it, just as sure as you, because what happened was Jeroboam came back later and he picked out the word. He picked certain scriptures, just like we do today. He gave ministers license. He said, the Lord called you to preach, huh? Here's your life, pay me this. Jeroboam did that. Until God destroyed everything on the Jeroboam and then he finally destroyed everything on the Judah. I don't want none of y'all churches. Because you don't go to the word. You go and find something in the word and say, that sounds good. I like that. He said, I ain't tell you to do that. He said, I told you to read every word. So you understand the book of Job is about a man named Job. You cannot take the book and split it up. You got to read what he said. That's his man testimony. It's like going to court and you leave out certain things because, oh, I can't understand. all. But they leave it alone. Don't touch it. I read one chapter and I read it over and over and over again so that I can understand what happened. And it's as easy as teaching it to my granddaughter, Park. I don't care who says what. When this guy got down, he said, I'm not going to give you them flattering titles. And I grew up with nothing but titles. And people will fight you over that. That's giving the honor. No, God said, you want to bet. He said, because I know God will remove himself as soon as you title yourself. And he will. Because that gives you the ranking that you can say something that somebody else can say. And God said, I ain't in none of it. He said, what I look like specializing you. What I look, what I look like telling you not to have another God. But I got to look at you and say, well, you, you this and you that and you little and you ain't got no power and you ain't this. Every bit of this is in the word of God. Every bit of it. Everything that we do, I just sit and look at people like them. Well, what make you right? I ain't right. I what I look like right. You think if I was right, you think I would have wasted 30, 60 something years of my life? I just started reading and said, the book said, I said, you said. And then I just had to go before God said, forgive him. I'm wrong. I ain't know that. I'm looking at it. So I take my time. What do I do? I take my time. I read one chapter. I, I teach it just like math. 
I do one. I taught the kid, this is how you multiply. That's all I'm talking about today. And then I'm going to show you how to divide. I'm assuming you already know how to add and subtract before you got to me. But if I have to do that, I do that too. And by the time you leave my class, you're going to know how to learn. You're going to learn how to learn under me. And then everything in my mind, according to the curriculum, I can't go. I saw teachers go in there and they'll say, well, I don't understand this stuff, so I'm just going to teach this right here. I knew they were doing that. I said, you can't just stick on one. Just because the principal does not know how to multiply, he the principal. He may, he may not know math. So he expected you to do it, but you, since he doesn't know how to do it, you just stay on this thing that he can't understand no way. If I go in to evaluate a teacher that's teaching Spanish, I can't tell you what that lady what that lady's saying, but one thing I can know, I watch how them children are responding to her to see whether or not they're on the same page. That's why you have to have integrity to teach the word. Because most people don't read. And they do this. Oh, okay. Hey, Amen. Don't know what they're talking about. So anybody that understands education, you read the book and you say what it says. You say, you can't go in Job said, Job, ew. I heard so many things people say that Job said, I read it for myself and I put it, I said, what? Till I just learned how to say, you know what? But anyway, so Moses said to these guys, don't you go in there with all that different teaching like that because it's going to be one thing God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you and that's out of my word. And then Jesus told Peter, said, he said, who man said I am? He said, some say you this, some say you that. And Jesus said, who do you say I am? Then he said, thou art the Christ. Jesus said, that's what I'm going to be in my church on what? The truth. What's the truth? What I said. He said, me and my father are one. He said, I didn't come to destroy the Old Testament. That would be crazy. But we took the, we told God, we're going to destroy it in a way. And God said, you, you don't get, he said, I want you to repent so you won't be destroyed. I'm giving you a chance to read this book over. Because ain't nobody... It's, it's, it's very few people reading it. You go online, and I sit in the class of the few people that teach, and guess what? Uh, not one of them black. Not one. All the teachers that I sit up under, basically up under that, some man named, all they do is teach the word. They teach it line, chapter by chapter. They may teach it one chapter a week, and they do it some kind of way. I just happen to teach it every day. But good teachers... Teach the word. Teach it that don't care. Girl, I gotta get, I gotta get a message. I gotta, I gotta get something that the Lord gave me. On it. I'd rather say I don't know. I can't, I can't do that. Because there's somebody reading. And God is wake. If He got to wake up a whole different group of kids, so go in and read that book. That book is so easy. It's so easy until I can't believe it. I am on chapter thirty-three, simply because. I took one, this has been going on for about two years. I'm doing one chapter. And then another thing that the word that Moses did was there were 12 tribes. And every tribe that gave an offering took about 80 verses. 80 verses. Uh, Judah, Neptali, Issachar, all those tribes, um, all the names. I don't have all the names of the 12, 12 tribes in front of me. But when they gave God an offering, 80, 80 verses, I think, when I read it back in Deuteronomy. And I didn't understand. I said, Lord, why am I keep reading the same thing? They said, the offering of Judah was this. The offering of Benjamin was this. The offering of, of uh, Issachar was this. The offering of Asher was this. The offering of Reuben was this. And, and I said, all I'm saying the same thing. So I thought I was like, I'm just wasting time. He said, keep reading. When I got through... Every day I would read the same chapter, the same offering, but a different chapter. He said, that's how the church is supposed to sound. Every church, every nation, every country. He said, when you bring me what I said, it's supposed to be the same thing. He said, if you talk about Job, this ain't got nothing to do with what I told you. Talk about Job. Learn what Job, I know every word that I read from Job 1 all the way to Job 33, and I can tell it, I can write a movie on it. I'm just not done yet. I got 10 more chapters. And so when I talk to people that read the word, we're going to know the same thing. We're going to know Eliphaz. We're going to know Zophar. We're going to know 
build that, and we're going to know Elihu. And God is going to finish letting these guys talk. And then and after Elihu get through talking, God said, y'all done. I'm getting ready to talk. And I'm going to finish this out. And when he get through talking, he said, I, this, is, this, this is what I'm trying to get. I don't want 2021 doing what y'all doing. I ain't never told neither, none of y'all to talk to Job. That was a conversation I had with, with, with the devil and myself. And I knew, and then you call yourself, you did not seek me. And that's what we do. We don't know what we're talking about. And then we'll run and tell people that I know what I'm talking about and feel good about it. This man said, I had a dream last night. I had half standing on the back of my neck. I know God said this, and God didn't tell you nothing. Because you never came to me. You went off of what somebody told you. But, but I can't tell you that until I get you there, because the only thing I can tell you today is this young man said, like when I came to Atlanta and I heard what the new church is saying, and then it really, it got my sons thinking, they'll teach you the once, once in Christ, never out. They, 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 they say, you know, and all, what, what do I do? I just pray. Because I was wrong too. I wasn't reading the word like this. I was complicating things. But once I learned that you're supposed to read it like a river that flows, then you won't get all that argument. You get an argument with church people, but you don't get an argument with people that read. You must be thinking you're the only somebody that get. I hear that all the time. How can I be right? The chapter 32 is talking about a boy that told him, y'all, I thought y'all had sense because you are. That's all it's talking about. I ain't got to be right. I just read it. It's talking about a young man who listened to old people talk and said, y'all ain't talking about nothing. I'm, it's my turn to speak. That's all it says. That's it. Now, what is that to argue about? Why do I think I'm right? I ain't do nothing but just read that. It don't make me right. I do nothing but read. Five times five is 25. That ain't right. Ain't none of me. It was, it was 25 before you ever met me. But my whole thing is, is what I've learned for me. It's, we got to go back and read this word, or we're gonna be in trouble. That's why we can't. That's why we can't stay. We get in. We we want God, but we don't know how to. We don't know how to live long enough. We don't live. We 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 live about as long. As, I can't even hardly say it. We live right about as long as somebody look. And then we go acting like the world. When we get home in our car, we just, I mean, before we get out of what we call, whatever we do. And God said, I'm able to keep you from falling. But you're going to fall if you don't get this word right. You're going to be tripping, and then you're going to try to talk about the word, and somebody's going to look at you like you're crazy. Because you don't know what you're talking about. Talking all over the place. I'm not going to ask me with 33, 32 saying, Elihu told the folk, uh, I thought y'all had sense because you were old and you don't. Now I want to talk. That's all it said. That's the whole essence of this whole chapter. Yesterday, what did Job say? What did 31 7 tell you out of my head? Job said, I have not looked at a woman. And if I did, he said, I want my wife to grind. He said, tell my wife she can grind with any man, another man, and, and another man bout, and more men bow down before her. I've not, I've not mistreated the, the uh, widows, the, the fatherless, or the poor. If I have, then take my shoulder from his bone and yank my arm off me. I have not. What else did Job talk about in 31? Because he kept saying, if I've taken a man and made him didn't do his food, if I, did, if I ate your food without paying for it, he said, let the food that I grow out of the ground, let it be as rose bushes, the thistles of a thing, and let me bite on that. He said, I have not done anything wrong. That's what, th that's what 30, 31 talking about. And we fussing over. How you know you're right? Because I read it. I'm not trying to give honor to, no, to nobody. I don't care. I read the book like a kid. I teach it to my grandkids. I, can re I know what I read. 32 chapters, I heard these guys talk against Job, and Job said, my righteousness 
He said, I'm not getting ready to, to oblige you by saying I did something wrong, all this crazy stuff going on with me. He said, I don't know what's going on with me. I'd rather be dead. He said, I wish I, he said, I wish, I don't know, I don't know why God treated me like that. That's all the man been saying for 30, for 30 some chapters. That's it. It ain't nothing said. The Lord told me to say, God, the word God said, I don't need you to talk. I just need you to read. And that's something we just don't feel like doing. So since I do read, I just want to make sure that if you go behind what I said, that you'll understand it. And I go behind other people. I dare not get on this online. I go sit up under some of the best commentators and writers on earth. And you can find them on YouTube. And they're not loud people. Because he said, I don't call them, he said, I don't use all them mighty folk. God, God's word is like this. He said, I got so many people that people don't even know, and they tell the truth, but you won't listen to them. Because they don't have a title. But that's what we run after. And then you're going to have to, what you going to do once he die? If he dies, I'm just saying. Just read the word for yourself and make it easy on yourself. Because you don't see my arteries, you don't see my veins, but they're the one that's really pumping my heart inside. God, I got a lot of people that you don't know. And when he gave those 30 guys, I think it was 33 guys that was with David, David said, y'all give me the credit, but it's these guys right here that you don't know that really helped me win these wars. And I want to honor them. And God said, that's how, that's how my role going to look when I call it. I'm going to call it. And you're going to say, who are that? Who are that? He said, because these people, that they weren't trying to make a name for themselves. All they did was just told the truth, which is very very not popular. When they when they were looking for Jesus, they were who is Jesus? And Peter had to kiss him. Why? Because they said they, he didn't make no name for himself. He didn't have no clergy call, no robe. <laughs> he looked like everybody else. He said, I got to kiss the one. Then when Jesus said, they asked Jesus, said, are you Jesus? He said, I am. And they fell back. <laughs> he go like Jesus. But I'm, like, I I'm scared to say I'm Jesus. <laughs> He said, I'm him. I am he. And they fell back. He said, I ain't never told you I put on no hot robe. It looks, you look silly. What I look like over here in the ears are way hot. And y'all walk around with a clergy collar around your neck. He said, the Gentile, them foolish people do that. Because that's the only thing they got to make them different because the spirit show ain't different. He said, but if you got a hidden man on the inside of you, then people know you by the way you treat people, how you love people, not by what you got on. And what your title is. So I want to see what this young man going to say. Which I already know he had an order. Why? Because the first and second chapter. Like you go into the movie. I already told me how this movie going to end. God said Job is perfect upright. He fears me and he hates evil. And he told the enemy. Do what you got to do to him. Now what is Job to me? Job is like the word of God. Whatever you do to me. I'm going to stand. Talk about me, criticize me, get a whole group of people against my word. My word going to still stand. And Job is like the word of God. I'll stand. If you don't believe who I am and you want to say that it's got to be something wrong with me because Supreme Court didn't push me out, the schools won't let me in. He said, I'm still God. And that's what Job is saying. Job just don't know that what he's saying, God is using him. God going to correct Job. Job said some things that I would probably say if I was in his, in his shoes. Uh, I don't understand why I'm going through this. Because even when you read the word and people look at you like you're doing something wrong. I, 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 the, when I started reading the word 25 years ago, I've been called all kind of names. I, I don't try to. At first it hurt. Now it is what it is. You get used to it. And then you just know where to put it. You make people mad. Why? You don't make nobody mad but religious people, but the common people. You don't make them mad. They see the word said that. Is, yep. Is it that easy? Yep. It ain't got nothing to do with it. Nope. Church is a big old entertainment center for people. And one of them guys told Job, lift up your hand and open up your mouth. And I said, I grew up like that. And God said, I ain't tell you to do that. It's like everything in here. And when 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 God when 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 um when who is that um when Solomon said and let me and let me be careful but when it is written there is nothing new under the sun I think Solomon said that 
But they didn't say God said that. What did Jesus say? Behold, all things come to you. So we got to be careful how we take these scriptures. And, and I'll say it like this. If it ain't nothing new under the sun, it's because you open up this book. And this book ain't not new. It's just an old book that ain't never been read. That's why it's new to me. <laughs> so I have to be careful when I tell people the words that there's nothing new under the sun. I got to wait till I get there. Because I know what I'm reading. Behold all things. I see things different. But it's an old book. But it's new to me. Because I never read it. And I can't find very many people. That's why I pray for my black churches. That's the Lord, please, God. We done entertain the songs, our lyrics to the songs we sing and ain't talking about nothing. Most of the musicians that teach, they ain't got time to read. It is not an indictment. I'm not trying to throw rock because I ain't read either. I talk what I know. I ain't read myself. But then when I start reading, I ain't put this book down. I'm like that woman that said, come and see this corn I found out. I found what I was looking for. I don't have, I don't have a, it's too easy. The book is too easy for us to be this. We been in this church. I've been, how old am I, 61? All I can say is I, I thank God that I pray every day that we will stop talking and stop reading this book all over the place. Yeah, how you going to go to, how you going to mix the, you gonna go. Well, I'm gonna go back to to John F. Kennedy. Now I'm gonna go up here to to Barack Obama. Now I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go back to. You can't read like that. History is not folded like that. You read the portion when in my when when 1960, and then you read the portion what happened in 1970. You just 61 and come on up, and then you'll find the find out how this thing flow. But we still read all over the place. That's why we got all these different people saying all this all this crazy stuff. And the Lord said, I'm not in it. Well, I know what he did for me. Them folks said the same thing. He said, I'm good. I said, I told you I'm good for the just and the unjust. I reign on the just and the unjust. So just because he said, I ain't, I'm not, I just, what, what, I, the best way I can explain it about me when I first started reading is that I had all the books all over the house. Like you go into a house, I got everything I need in here. It just didn't make sense. It was just all over the place. And then the Lord said, okay, put the bathroom stuff in the bathroom. Put the kitchen stuff in the kitchen. He just that good to me. I said, oh, they go in the bathroom. He said, yep. Come to me every day. I'll show you how to get organized. That's how you read the word. Because when I started reading Abraham, I saw his children. Then I saw what his children did. All the way his children acted up until God said no more. When you get into First and Second Chronicles, and then you get into Nehemiah. Um, I mean, you get into, uh, what's that guy's name? Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. You don't hear no more about a king. And then you get in Job. He's not talking about kings anymore. But then we're going to get back into um, Isaiah and Jeremiah. And then they're going to bring those kings back up. But right now he's talking about this guy named Job. But next chapter we're going to read is uh, Marie, 150 Psalms. And that's going to take me all the way until January. I'm going to read every letter I want to. Read everything, and I understand why Joe wrote those songs because I I saw what Joe, I mean, um, what Dave was going through. So when I get in there, I understand why he said this, because it's gonna be a summary of the kings. But right now, God just taking us back. He said, "I ain't got no kings no more." So let me take y'all all the way back to Joe, and show you what it was like when I had a man that was doing exactly what I wanted. So the only thing again, chapter thirty-two is saying is. It's a young boy, young man. And he said, y'all old people don't know what you're talking about. And I'm going to straighten Job out. And that's it. Got to get to 33 to see what he said. And then after I do 33, he's going to talk five chapters. And they said he talked he, he talk longer than anybody to accuse Job. Because everybody else had one chapter. This guy going to have five chapters. And then God going to say, time up. I'm talking. 
And I'm not going to run over there and see what he said. I can't haul away. <laughs> well, I'm done, people. That, that's the word of God. It's as simple as that. It's, every day is simple. Every day it's, and you've got to take your time and read it. Otherwise, you're going to sound foolish, just like these people did. Sound, they was taking scriptures, and this boy took scriptures too. He said some right things, but he out of order. He didn't yawn. So, simple. All right, people, I got to go. I'll talk to y'all later. Love y'all. Bye.